I went to a lot of meetings and there were a lot of uh, public hearings and the steering committee uh, was composed of people who were pro-dog and people who didn't want dogs in the park and the whole point was to build a consensus about the hours that dogs would be allowed off leash in Ward Acres. Keep in mind that for decades the dogs have been allowed off leash there. This has basically been an unofficial dog park for the neighborhood and surrounding towns for almost four decades. So the city council and the mayor, especially the mayor, said that we really want to find something that will work for everybody. When the final hours were posted, the people in the dog community were really upset, myself included. After all the letters and meetings and everything that the mayor and the city council and the special subcommittee set up about dogs and ward acres and having lots of extra time for people who would like to come to the park without the dogs. After all of that, in the end, the hours were finally set in stone about a month ago. And these hours are highly restrictive. With how the rules now stand, uh, there are no evening hours or afternoon hours, weekends and holidays from April 1st through November 15th, the very time when most people love to go to the park with their kids and their dogs and meet their neighbors and have some fun. These hours, the only hours that are going to be allowed during the warm weather months are before 10 a.m. This will be a real hardship for working families who don't have the time to go during the week but really look forward to this as an outing. Some people's dogs unfortunately only get to go to the park once or twice a week and that's usually on the weekends and they're going to lose that benefit. Park it. <laughs> Settle. Stay. The squirrel's history. So that means that most people who do work during the week usually come to the park on the weekends or on holidays when they're not working, especially during the warm weather, and they come with their families and their children and their pets, and they meet their neighbors, and their dogs get a lot of exercise, and it's a good event for everybody. That has totally been done away with. That will no longer be allowed. I recently spoke to Barry Fertel, who is a council person whose uh, district has Ward Acres, and I asked him why. Why are they so heavily restricted on the weekends and holidays? And he said, because we want families to come who don't necessarily have dogs, might be afraid of dogs. We want them to use the park on the weekend for state parks and concerts in the park. And, you know, that doesn't mix as far as he's concerned with dogs off leash. So that's where we're at right now. It means that this wonderful community that's been built up over decades, that's really been a very helpful thing for the community, will now be decimated. People will not be able to use the park. They'll rarely be able to use the park. Maybe if they have a day off during the week, and it's not an official holiday, they can get over there. But will they be able to go there with their families? Probably not. In addition to the new rules, there's also going to be um, more restrictions about how, how you bring your dog to the park. Your dog will have to be licensed. You'll have to get a permit. You'll have to pay a fee. The fee is per dog. Now, for me, I'm a new Rochelle resident. I have one dog. The fee is going to be $50. I'm willing to do that. But if you don't live in New Rochelle, the fee is $250. Say you have several dogs. That can be quite expensive, especially if now with these new fees and all these new rules, you're only going to be able to use the park a few times a year, maybe. Are you going to pay that kind of money? Probably not. What's going to happen, and what I think may have been in the back of many people's minds on the city council, was to really restrict having the dogs at the park. If you make it difficult for people to come by putting all kinds of rules and regulations, then they're much more likely to just say, oh, it's too much bother and not go. We've got over 30 parks. They're open to everybody except for dogs. This was the only park where people were allowed to bring their dogs albeit unofficially, but still for almost four decades, people were allowed to bring their dogs off leash, get exercise, hike with their dogs. You were not just sitting around in a small enclosed area where they're walking, we're meeting people. It's a lot of fun for everybody. I think once these rules are, are in place, the park will become like so many of the other parks. Uh, there'll be a lot more trash, a lot more vandalism. What people don't realize, and what I don't think the city council is taking into account when they made these rules, is that the park will be used a lot less. 
that the people who use the park now, seven days a week, year-round, add to the safety and the cleanliness of the park. People pick up after themselves. They care. Once you kick them out, who knows who's going to use that park? Probably at first it will become a lot less utilized, like the Nature Study Woods over on Webster Avenue, or the Larchmont Reservation Woods, or some of the other places. It'll become a lot less utilized and eventually fall into disrepair. And we'll have another unsafe, dirty park right here in the heart of New Rochelle. And it will cost us a lot of money because they're raising a bond first for $500,000 to do so-called improvements at the park, but over time they'd like that number to go up to quite a bit higher, maybe into the millions. For what? To make a big fancy park that hardly anyone will use. It's just a crime. And my taxes will go up in the process. And I won't have any place to exercise my dog on weekends and holidays. All that and a bigger tax bill. I just don't see how the good citizens in New Rochelle are going to be happy with this outcome. I adopted my dog Ruby from the North Shore Animal League about five years ago. When I got her, she was about 12 weeks old. Ruby's a large dog. She weighs almost 80 pounds at this time. I had to put a lot of effort into socializing her and getting her exercise so that she could be a good member of our community. You know, people and dogs have been living together for centuries and centuries. We have a wonderful bond, but they have to be trained. And this is a really important thing when you get a dog that comes from a pound or an abuse situation, the dog needs to be socialized. One of the best things that New Rochelle's Ward Acres does is it allows a place for people who foster and help to get animals adopted. It gives them a place to come and work with the animals. They're allowed to exercise them, get them used to other dogs. The problem is with the new rules, they will no longer be able to use this wonderful resource for socializing unwanted and abused animals because they won't be able to get license and registrations and permits because the dogs aren't permanently there. They're just being fostered and there doesn't seem to be any uh, leeway in these rules. No special licenses or circumstances to allow people who are fostering animals to get permits so they can use the park with these animals. It's really it's so sad that the city council and the city manager, Mr. Strom, have not thought about all the implications of these rules. The rules on the, you know, surface may seem like they're a good thing, but they have some really negative impacts. I think we can all agree that having dogs be socialized and trained so that they can be adopted is good for everybody. It's good for the dogs, it's good for the community. I think it would be really great if the city council and the city manager would rethink some of this and consider having a special permit for foster dogs for the Humane Society. Also, what about having a guest dog? What if you have a friend who says, can you watch my dog for the week? You can't bring the dog to the park. There's no guest permit or anything. You're watching your, your mother's dog and you got to say, hey, nope. You can't go to the park. I don't have a permit for you. There doesn't seem to be any wiggle room with these rules. They're hard and fast, and at the end of the day, all they're going to do is make the park used a lot less by the very people who love it, who care for it, who clean up, and keep the park safe in our community. I cannot say enough about how much safer this park is than most or not all of the area's parks. Once you kick those dogs and the owners out on the weekends in the summer, you're going to have more vandalism, more kids hanging out doing things they shouldn't, then, you, then now, there's none of that now. The park's just a wonderful resource now. And there still can be compromise. Just adding a few extra hours on weekends and holidays could make all the difference, and the middle of the days would still be free for school children or other people who say they're afraid of dogs.